Why would a good God create viruses? Now, that's not a bad question. In fact, that's a great question. Because viruses, historically, were discovered because they're associated with disease. Like the first virus that was discovered, the tobacco mosaic virus, which infects tobacco plants and other crops. And then there are other viruses that can wipe out entire flocks of birds, like fowlpox virus or bird influenza virus. Then there's viruses that infect animals, like distemper and rabies. And Ebola virus killed over 11,000 people with a mortality rate of 40%. So it didn't take long, immersed in my studies of human pathogens and the diseases that the viruses caused, to come to the conclusion that if viruses fit into the Christian narrative, that they must be associated with the fall. Because of the disease that they caused, because of the suffering that they caused. And perhaps they're associated with the fall as just a byproduct of the curse. Or perhaps they're associated with lives that are unsustained by or denied access to the tree of life, which was a product of the curse. So maybe viruses are just part of the normal decay that lead to disease when we're denied access to that sustaining life that happened as a result of the fall. Okay, well, so the problem with answers is I always have more questions. So although this answer wasn't bad and it wasn't unreasonable, I also didn't find it deeply satisfying. And so these questions didn't stop hounding me, even though I had an answer. But on the heels of that answer, if viruses are associated with the fall, my question now became, well, what is my response and my role as somebody studying viruses in light of this? I began to think of my studies and my activities and my future activities of doing virus research as ways of counteracting aspects of the fall. If I could learn about viruses and help uh, develop antivirals or things that could prevent viral infections, then perhaps my work could be a type of redemptive work.